Good morning. Welcome to Talk Straight Bible today. My name is Deborah. I'm grateful to be here to share the word of the Lord and to encourage you and to deliver to you what God has been ministering to me for the these past weeks now about how we can have rest from fear. So before we do get into that, Lord, we come before you and we thank you. We bow in your presence this morning. We bow our hearts. Lord, and we ask you that your word would uh, go forth into our hearts and it would increase our faith so we can grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ for the purpose which you're sending your word out even right now, God. We have faith and we know that it will accomplish the purpose why you're sending it out today. We thank you and we praise you and we love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Rest from fear. So I'm going to read a few verses and then I'm going to bring you some encouragement and share some beautiful nuggets that God has shown me. In Isaiah 26, verse 3 to 4, the steadfast of mind you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in God the Lord, we have an everlasting rock. Proverbs 133. But whosoever hearkens unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Psalm 112 verse 6. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. Psalms 55, verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. I want to encourage you because we can have rest in the storms of life when we let patience possess our souls, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. And this is where I'm going with this message. How God's perfect love casts out all fear. And we can rest. We can rest from fear. That's what God wants for us to rest. It's resting in him, resting in Jesus, resting in the sovereignty of the Lord. Cast it out. Cast out fear as if it's a burden. Cast it away, meaning cast it out. Throw it away. Get rid of it. Put it far away from you. Whatever is burdening you, and in this case today, the subject is fear, cast it onto the Lord. The word says he sustains us. He will not allow us, suffer us to be moved because of his perfect love, his complete love. It casts out all fear. So when we cast whatever our burden is on the Lord, and today, as I said, it's the topic of fear, whatever your specific burden is, I want to even encourage you in that. Cast it out. Roll it on to the Lord. Get rid of it. How do you do that? In prayer, confession, when you're in the word of the Lord, you see it. When you see whatever is having a hold on you, whatever that sin burden may be for the moment, for the day, whatever it is, it's a practice. It's a continuance of practice, recognition of what it is. And God doesn't want us to hold on to that. Be honest, whatever your burden is. Again, whatever it is to, for today, the, the topic of today's devotion is fear and casting it out and getting rid of it because God wants us to rest in that. But he truly wants his children resting in him. He wants us to have a peace in him that passes all understanding to be of steadfast in mind as we read in Isaiah 26 at verse 3. He keeps us in perfect peace. So again, whatever it is that's burdening you, I want to encourage you to roll it on to the Lord. I sought the Lord and he heard me, the psalmist writes, and he delivered me from all my fears, Psalms 34 verse 4. Those who looked him are radiant. Their faces never shall be ashamed. The poor man cried out. The Lord heard him and he saved him and he delivered him from all his troubles. 
Verse 7, the angel of the Lord it camps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Oh, taste and see. The Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. I'm going to read something from you from Matthew Henry. Talking about uh, take, when we take possession of our souls. Jesus told us that. You know that in the midst of Luke 21, when he's talking about there'll be wars and rumors of wars and there'll be t- turmoils in the earth and perilous times and persecutions. Jesus tells us that by our, pos- pos- um, by our patience, we possess the soul. But listen to this beautiful commentary. Matthew Henry, he writes, possessing our souls, be your own men, keep up the me- ma- meaning Be strong, be vigilant, be militant in possessing your own soul. Keep up the authority and dominion of reason and keep under the tumults tumults of passion that neither grief nor fear may tyrannize over you. Wow, fear is like tyranny. So it doesn't turn you out of the possession and enjoyment of yourselves. In God, right? It can rob you of your joy. It's just I'm throwing in my own little commentary there. Quote, in difficult times, when we can keep possession of nothing else, then let us make that that sure, which we may be made sure, to keep possession of our own souls. Again, I'm going back to what we read, the steadfast of mind. God keeps in perfect peace. Why? Because we trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord forever. For in the Lord our God, we have an everlasting rock. We can rest in the storm. So I'm going to shed some context on two storm scenes encountered by the disciples. Uh, The first one is in Matthew 8. Uh, beginning at verses 23 to 27. You know, when Jesus got into the boat with his disciples and there arose a great storm on the sea so that the boat was actually being swamped by the waves. But where was Jesus? He was sleeping. He was resting. And they awoke him saying, Lord, save us. Don't you know that we're perishing? Don't you see there's a storm, Lord? Don't you even feel it? How are you sleeping? Lord, Don't you know what I'm going through? Lord, don't you see what's happening? Lord, where are you? Lord, why are you quiet? Lord, I need you. Lord, are you asleep on me? Help me. Help me. Mm. I'm sure you've cried out like that. But as they cried out, Lord, save us, we're perishing. In verse 26, he says, why are you afraid, you of little faith? Then he rose, rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. The men marveled, saying, what sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? He answered them first. Look how beautiful he tells them. He didn't say you have no faith. You have zero faith. He didn't re- rebuke them in that way. No, he says little faith. See, you woke me enough, even in your little faith, to know to ask for help. But let me encourage you further. Isn't how it's so beautiful how gentle our Lord is? How the Lord is not condescending he says little faith he's not condescending in the rebuke but he condescends to our level in such gentleness but what does he do he rebukes he rebukes the storm and by the demonstration of his sovereignty he answers the disciples by rebuking the storm, showing them, I am who I am. I have the power and the authority over the storms, the storm of the sea and, beloved, the storms of our life. I have the power and the authority to calm any storm. Nothing happens apart from my permissive will. Rest in my sovereignty. Did he not answer Job the same way at the end of the trials of Job? Oh, yes, he did. You can read on that. 
rest in his sovereignty. Let's talk about another stormy moment when Jesus was walking on the water and then he beckoned Peter to come on out of the boat. And you can read that in Matthew 14, 22 to verse 28. Jesus walks on water immediately, it says in verse 22. He made the disciples get into the boat and go before him on the other side while he dismissed the crowds. But where was Jesus? He was up in a mountain. He was alone by himself praying. Evening came. He was all by himself. But the boat by this time was long away from the land, beaten by waves again. There it is again, another storm, another raging of the sea. For the wind was against him. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came walking to them on the sea. The disciples saw them not. You got this scene. The, so the storm is raging. And now you're just like, what? We got the storm to contend with. But now there's a ghost. <laughs> so they cried out in fear. But immediately, don't you love it? They cried out in fear, but... Again, Jesus saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid, it's not a ghost. But look what Peter says, Lord, if this is you, command me to come on the water. You know, I paused there because you know what I thought of immediately, and maybe you are too right now? Beloved, didn't John say to test the spirits, believe not every spirit, but test and see whether they be of God? I thought of that. So even in the midst of the storm, see, a lot of other competing voices want to come and tell us one thing or another, but aren't we too to test the spirit to see whether they be of God? See, even in the storms of life, see, the enemy wants to come and rob you of your peace and give you a false peace, maybe a false message. Beloved, test the spirits to see whether they be of God. And by this, you will know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus is Christ, has, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is from God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. And I'm going to just continue it out. Little children, you are from God. Think of this. You have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Wow, getting back to the storm. I, wanted, I just needed to admonish you in that. Peter, come. He got out of the boat. He's walking on the water. But he gets his eyes off Jesus. Now he's walking now, right? He tested his spirit. He walked out on the word of God. He's walking over the water. He's walking in the storm. Wow, he's walking on the sea. And what happens? He gets his eyes off Jesus. <laughs> and what happens? We begin to sink. Nothing new under the sun. We can sink when our eyes are off the Lord, when our eyes are off his word, when our eyes are not listening to the spirit of the living God. We will focus on the wind and the waves and we begin to sink too and cry out, Lord, save me again. Our Lord condescends to our level. He immediately reaches out. He grasps his hand. He took hold of him. Oh, you fled of faith. Why'd you doubt? And they get in the boat. The wind ceased. They worshiped him. Truly, you are the son of God. See what happens when we go through storms? We too can walk over it, beloved. We don't have to drown. We don't have to have our souls be drowning with the weight of the burdens, and in this case today, fear, or whatever else it may be, fear of un unseen circumstance, fear of the unknown, fear of what's going to happen with my job, fear of what's going on with this report that I'm hearing from the doctor. Fear, fear, it wants a false evidence appearing real. But the Lord wants us to take possession of our, of our souls by patience. I can't read it all, but as you can read it in Luke 21, where Jesus, that portion of uh, that passage in uh, Luke 21, where he's foretelling about wars and rumors of wars and nation rising against nation and earthquakes and diverse places and famines, pestilence, fearful sights. Is that happening? Look what we're in the midst of. We're very, very prophetic time right now. He's talking about what's going to happen, how the persecution is going to come. But in verse 13, everything turns out for a testimony. Isn't that awesome? You got to go through a test to have a testimony. 
And he says, settle it in your hearts. He's encouraging them. You don't even have to meditate on beforehand what you have to say. He tells us in verse 15, he's encouraging the disciples. I am going to give you a mouth and wisdom, which your adversaries cannot gainsay nor resist. And he goes on to say, but look at in verse 19. I love this. In your patience, possess your soul. He's telling them what's going to happen. The time about the betrayal and backing up in verse 16. You'll be betrayed by parents, brethren, kinsfolks, friends. Some of you will be put to death. You're going to be hated for my name's sake. But he says in verse 18, not a hair on your head's going to perish. Uh-uh. In your patience, possess your soul in your endurance, in your steadfastness, in your continuance, possess, take hold of, dominate it, dominate it. You walk over those fears that are trying to pull you down. You walk over that stormy sea. Grab a hold of it. Jesus is with you. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. You see that hand that is stretching you up? It's upholding you. Grab a hold of his hand, obtain it, possess it, do not let it go. Anything that is burdening you, cast it out. Whatever the burden is, whatever it is, if fear is on that hook, you the rod is in your hand, cast it out. Doubt is on the end of your hook while that rod is in your hand, cast it out, right? That's the words it means, cast it out, throw it away. Give it to the Lord. Be honest about whatever your burden is. Again, like I said, in this devotion for today, it may be fear. But in an exchange, what does he do as you cast out whatever that burden is? In exchange, his perfect love. Cast out all fear because there's no fear in love. Perfect love. God's complete love. It casts out all fear. You see? Fear has to do with punishment. Pause right there. Isn't it enough what fear can do to us if we don't take possession of our own soul? It wants to, in a way, doesn't that what the enemy of the soul wants to do? Just keep you bound and wants to see you in some falsified way to actually take possession over you by by having you in your 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 kind of like maybe out of your mind or a lot of sorts and worry and concern and anxiety it's a form of punishment kind of he he wants to do right but uh -uh, not our lord because god's perfect love casts it out circumstance may be the same but god is teaching us training us to trust in him god wants us perfect Perfected, completed, that means, in his love. Luke 174 to 75. That we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, that we might serve God without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him. When? All our days, beloved. Why? Romans 8, 15, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, for God. 2 Timothy 1, 7, our God put his Holy Spirit in us. He didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Don't you just love it? God's perfect love casts out all fear. And he wants us to take possession of our souls by the patience of the fruit. Isn't that the fruit of the Holy Spirit? It's in us already. Let it have its work in you. Hallelujah. Because... Oh, God, we are so grateful that we received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Oh, Lord, we thank you that we worship you by the spirit of the living God. That is the only acceptable worship with reverence and in awe because you are a God. You are a consuming fire. Lord, you put your spirit in us so we can worship you. 
by your precious Holy Spirit. And that's the only acceptable worship. He who worships you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Oh, beloved, rest in the storms that you are going through by letting your patience possess your soul. Cast out the burden and let his perfect love cast out all fear. In the name of Jesus, amen.